This is section 9.3. We're going to take a look at the unit circle. So today, you guys are going to be able to utilize the unit circle to evaluate common trig values. Now, we previously examined rotation around a circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that there's going to be a point at the end of the radius. Okay, we're just going to say that it's going to be point P. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that that radius is 1. Now, if the radius of your angular motion here, right, if that radius is 1, a little messy, what actually ends up happening is the point P represents both sine and cosine of a ratio. Now it's kind of weird, and it's been a while since we did sine and cosine, so let's kind of look at that first. But this is going to be important. We're going to validate this claim right here, how the x-coordinate of P is going to be cosine, and then the y-coordinate of P is going to be the sine value of your angle. So why, why do we make that radius 1? So let's look at an example here. Let's just say on this triangle, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so that means if I go through and I wanted to say find the sine of that angle, well, that's opposite over hypotenuse. That's 4 over 5. If I wanted to find the cosine, that's going to be adjacent 3 over hypotenuse 5. Now, if I make the radius 1, which means how would I do that? Well, since my hypotenuse is 5, I can divide every side by that same ratio. And it's going to be it's going to represent the same angle. So, I can divide everything by 5. So, if I do that, then this side becomes 3 fourths, this side becomes uh, sorry, 3 fifths, that side becomes 4 fifths, and we know that this is 1. So now if I do my sine and cosine, my sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is just 4 fifths. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just 3 fifths. Now the ratios are the same, Right? For cosine theta, it's both 3 fifths. For sine theta, it's both 4 fifths. So those are the same. The difference now is look at our point. My point here, my x value and my y value, right? 3 is x and 4 is y. But now my x value is 3 fifths. My y value is 4 fifths. So that means my cosine value now equals my x, and my sine value now equals my y. This is why we want our hypotenuse to be 1. It's because now we can say my cosine theta equals x, my sine theta equals y. So now let's take another step here. So if I wanted to find the cosine and sine value for these, right, we know how to draw this. My rotation here for 270 degrees, so that rotates, and so here's my radius and it's a radius of 1, so that means that if it's going down one space, that point must be 0, negative 1, and so we said x is cosine, y is sine theta, right? And so I can actually go through and say, well, my sine of 270 degrees, that's the y value, so negative 1, the cosine of 270 degrees is going to be 0. I can do the same thing here with 45 degrees. Now, how did I get root 2 over 2? Okay, so we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's 45, and I know that that is 1. These both equal each other, and this is t root 2. So if I have 1 equals t root 2, divide both sides by root 2, and so this becomes 1 over root 2, and this becomes 1 over root 2, which if you rationalize, if you multiply top and bottom by root 2, you get root 2 over 2. And so that's why I know that those sides are root 2 over 2. So then my sine and cosine, sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, 
cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. And so now we kind of have the logic there. We're now going to piece that together and we're going to construct the unit circle. And we're actually going to do that with our 30, 60, 90 triangle and our 45, 45, 90 triangles. And we're going to go through and we're going to be able to construct it. You just saw me create this. Now for this one, all I did, remember, because this is 2t, I just divided everything by 2, and that's how we have those values. Because if this is, right, because if this, this is 1, this is 1 root 3, and this is 2. So if I divide that by 2, it makes the radius 1, but then that becomes root 3 over 2, and that becomes 1 half. Now I'm going to go kind of quick on this, but essentially, all we do is we take these triangles, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees, and we place them on the unit circle. So we'll start with the 45 degree triangle. So if I place that triangle here, that coordinate, my these sides, right, is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2, so then we have this value. If I place the triangle over here, Right, just by looking at this, I know that because this is a negative x, this is going to be negative root 2 over 2. This is going to be positive root 2 over 2. But more importantly, what's my rotation? Right, to place this triangle that's 45 degrees, I have to rotate 90 degrees plus another 45 degrees to get to that. And so that rotation there is actually going to be 135. You're probably thinking, like, what? So even though the triangle is like this and it's placed there, remember, we're starting with a rotation that's here, and it's how does that radius rotate. Now the same thing here. If I wanted to place this triangle here now, right, I have this radi radius, and that's rotating all the way to there. And so once again, we have 180 plus 45, that's going to give us 225. Now just by looking at these values, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, and so because negative x, negative y, and that's how I get there. And we can do the same thing for this 45 degree angle here. That rotation all the way to here, because this right here is my radius. So that rotation all the way to there, 270 plus 45, that gives us 315 positive x, negative y. Now we do the same thing with the 30 degrees. This is going to be, if you look at this shape, root 3 over 2, up 1 half. And then we can place it over here. Now this is going to be 90 degrees plus 60 degrees. So that's 150. Negative x, positive y. I'm going to go a little quicker. Negative x, negative y. 180 plus 30. And then this last one, 270 plus 60, so that gives us 330. And so positive x, negative y, we have that point there. The last is the 60 degrees, same idea. One half, right, because this the cosine right here, our x value is one half. And then the sine value is radical 3 over 2. Okay, and then I can place the circle on this side. Our rotation is 90 plus 30, so that's going to be 120. And then place the triangle down here, so that's going to be 180 plus 60, so that's 240. And then placing the triangle over here, 180, I know it's a little off, but 180, or sorry, 270 plus 30 more, and so that's going to be 300. And then positive x, negative y, that's going to be that value there. And so we still have the poles. What if happens if I just have the radius of 1 here? That's 1, 0. If I go up, that's 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. But those are easy, right? If you think of it as like a graph, you're just moving one step over, one step up, one step to the left, one step down. Now these are all the values put together. I know you're like, whoa, that's a lot. And it is, right? But there's a pattern. There's a really nice pattern in here. And we're going to go over that pattern very shortly in class. So just understand 
that even though it seems like it's a lot of information, it's not too bad because of the patterns. And then right here, this is if I include the radian values, right? Because we know how to convert between radians and degrees now. So now let's use this unit circle and let's calculate these values. So this is saying cosine of 135 degrees. So I know that cosine means the x value. Here's my rotation of 135 degrees. So what is the x value when I rotate 135 degrees? So I'm going to rotate over to 135 degrees. My x value is negative root 2 over 2. Not too bad. So the sine of 270, sine is y. So the y value at the rotation of 270 degrees. So rotate 270 degrees, my y value is negative 1. My cosine value at 7 pi 6. So cosine is x, my rotation is 7 pi 6. So remember if we cut these into 6, 1 6, 2 6, 3 6, 4 6, 5 6, 6 6, 7 6. So right here, there's 7 pi 6. So the cosine value is my x value, so that's a negative root 3 over 2. Cosine of 5 pi thirds. So cosine of 5 pi thirds, so we go over to 5 pi thirds, the cosine value is 1 half. So the cosine of 360. So this is 0 degrees, we're rotating 360, and then the cosine value is the x, so that is 1. Sine value of 450. What? What happened there? Well, we're going to have some rotation going on here. So we got to break this up, 360, and then I have to go an extra 90. So that means for that one, here's our 360, and then I have to go an extra 90. And so the sine value, the y value of that is going to be 1. And then the last one, the sine of negative 30 degrees, remember negative rotation. So now I'm going to rotate negative 30 degrees. And so if I rotate negative, that puts me at this spot here. And so my sine value or the y value is negative 1 half. So let's close today's lesson. What did we learn today? Well, we learned about the unit circle, how it was constructed, how we used those special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 to be able to do that. And remember, cosine is the x value, sine is the y value. Now what is assumed to the radius of the unit circle? One. Please start memorizing the unit circle. This is something that we need to memorize, and I guarantee you, you memorize this, your pre-calc career, your calculus career, be much, much easier. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.